out of, especially when the pressure is on. So here is Rabbi leading this, like, 300-plus people with eight buses. He is, you, you are, first of all, you have your family, your own personal family. You have your wife, your two little kids, who at the time were four and two. You, you have your mother-in-law, who is precious. You have us, <laughs> which was a lot, <laughs> you know, and our camera crew following around. <laughs> And then 300 plus people on a tour, and trying. And we're filming every inch of it. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like this production that was, you know, very well planned or anything. We were just trying to get in there and get some of all of this. It's a life. It's a life. It was exciting. Living thing. And 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 Rabbi was so patient with us and all the people. If any of you are watching out there, I just want to say a big thank you to you because that were on the buses with us because you were patient with us as well. Do you really like doing that? The tour? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That's a job. It, it is, and it's challenging. On you, because you're it's preaching and teaching all the time. every few yeah, hours physically. you're in a new part of the world, I yeah. mean, of Israel's yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Physically, it's very, it's nonstop, you know, but but it's exciting. I mean, to be there and see everybody, how they react. And we're all jet-lagged. Everyone's yeah. completely jet-lagged, yeah. and yeah. you're completely in another, yeah, yeah exactly. And, you know, w we have, we filmed it all, which I know had to be all our camera people in your face all the time and all. And so we put it on two big sets. Now, you that ordered it, you got set one already. Now, you got set two. Unless you want a second set, don't order it again. Because set two in a few days is going to be coming to you. And you'll have the whole tour. You get to go, I mean, on a thousands of dollar tour. I don't know what a tour costs, but it costs a lot of money to go on a tour. You're getting it. We're doing this for $55 in honor of the rabbi's 10th anniversary <laughs> of, of his, his wedding <laughs> and our, his 13th visit to Morning our show. Yes. And, and it and was so one of those visits when Rabbi invited us yes. to come with you on the tour. And I will tell you, Rabbi, and this is what I love about the Lord. So many things I love about him, but you know, he truly does give you your heart's desires yes. when you seek after him and follow after him and go after him. And one of my little heart's desires deep inside of my heart, really big heart's big desires, heart's but, desire, yes. but <laughs> I never dreamt in a million years I would get to go to Israel. I would have that honor. And honestly, I have had other people say, Lori, why don't you come? Why don't you come? You know, different tour groups, but it never was the right one and I would just say to anybody and I say it all the time to people if you're ever going to go on an Israel tour, tour, tour and if you ever do this again you need to go with Rabbi the reason is is because he teaches at every single spot every, he, he, I can't even explain it it's just it's like you're sitting at his feet learning you're in Nazareth Remember climbing up those rocks, Zach, and we're in Nazareth, and, and we're overlooking. And I remember just sitting that on That was amazing up there, though. Yeah, Nazareth overlooking Armageddon. Armageddon, Yeah, yeah. you've yeah. got Thank Armageddon you. on one side, Nazareth <laughs> on the other side, yeah, yeah. and it's all on these videos. Yes. This would be hundreds of dollars. It's the teaching. This, would, this, so this set should cost $500 to have this much video shot. That's and right. Edited. And in just the volume one and volume two, it's for a combined donation price of $55. And it's eight DVDs, 20 oh hours man. of video. And it's literally Rabbi John and all these special places we go. And Rabbi Jonathan come teaching in all of these special spots. Okay, we, and so today, while the rabbi's here, then it's over forever to be able to do this. You know, so we, $55. We, $55. And we can't do this anymore. But I just want to ask Zach because we talked about what some of our favorite spots. What was one of your favorite spots? Quickly, Zach. M okay, well, probably my favorite spot. I can't remember what the mountain's name was, but it was the first day in Galilee, and we were on a mountain overlooking the Sea of Galilee. I remember Mount that. Mount Mount I, that picture Mount is Arbel. burning my Arbel. brain of yes. you. Yes. 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 What that is it, Rabbi, again? Mount Arbel. Yes. That's the one oh, they got to see that. What, yeah. what, you, what was that, one or two, I wonder? Um, I ma maybe one. You, you yeah, actually recommend, you said, why don't you have everybody sit down so it was kind of like, it yeah. was like Jesus, it was so like you were there. I <laughs> thought we were with Jesus um, in the Holy Land. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a picturesque moment. It was. And you had your rabbi 
cloak, what do you call it? The the, the, the 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 talit. The talit. Talit. And I thought, just, I felt like I was sitting in the hills of Jerusalem it with was. Jesus. It was very beautiful. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. And so today we're going to offer this just why the rabbi's here. And uh, yesterday we, we did a crazy thing. We, we offered our supposed to be a $100 gift yes. offer. Yes. And that was the Harbinger. Now, by the way, I want you to let us know what's going on with the Harbinger okay. and the Shemitah books. So the whole package. So you get and the, the Harbinger. The har- yes, and, the, ha- and the, the mystery of the Shemitah book as well. You also get the mystery of the Shemitah unlocked DVD. Video. Yes. That's the best. That explains it. This is what you're going to need when the world's come apart to put on your machine. If, the, if, if you got a generator, you could do that. And play it for people to know what in the world happened. God has not left us alone. God warned us. Yeah. And then we're, we're throwing in uh, the, the, the Tales of Sins a, book. Yes, Tales of a Wandering is the Prophet. brand new book. We got to introduce this. We've introduced both of the rabbi's books for the first time on this show, which has been a great honor. And then you get all of the mystery, volume 13. And that's what this is, the special 13th which is, visit. Which is nine DVDs of teachings by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And then, for those who want to do all this today, forever, ever, hold your peace. After, oh, my. After Rabbi's with God. But we're throwing in this. This yeah. right yes. here is worth probably 160 minimum yes. dollars for these, this tour set. The entire tour. tour of the Holy Land. That's right. And, and for it's a complete, the, the suggested retail value for all of this is right around $420 altogether. Yeah. So you're getting it for a $100 love gift. Man, the mailman's going to have to you know, <laughs> have some help carry all this. But, but you get that. And I did want to say this. I want you to talk to us about the Shemitah and the Harbinger. Let's go back to the Harbinger book. What's happening with the Harbinger? You, you, you shook the world with this book. It's been one of the best-selling Christian books during this period in history. Well, now uh, I'm looking at that. It says a million copies. It's now over two million. <gasps> oh, from, this, from, oh from the time it started here, from it from started here. This is the f- actually the first time I ever saw a copy was here. Yeah. The first time it ever went on the air was here. Yeah. You know, uh, but it's over two million copies. Um, and it's going forth, and the mystery of the street is going even stronger, even oh. more strongly. Um, every really? member, every member of Congress has received a copy of both. Oh. Every every, oh, every member of Congress. Um, and I'm still getting people who are calling up about making this into a movie, and I'm just praying, waiting on the Lord on that. You know, but it's going. I believe just God wanted wants before He acts, He warns, and I believe He's just He just did this from the beginning, and so it's just gone forth. This is the warning of what God did in Bible days, mm-hmm. and it all. That's repeating. I, I, it's coming before to pass. you came, I was wondering, what is God saying through 9/11? Why did God let His hand down? You know, people say, "Well, God wouldn't do that," but people that say that they don't mm-hmm. know no the God. Bible, do yeah. they? Yeah. No, and God, God, uh, God's heart is salvation. He must, He must act. In fact, it's His mercy that He warns. It's His mercy that He shakes. You know. Uh, for most of us came to the Lord because there was some shaking in our life, you know, so, so with the nation. So this is the, in the last days of Israel, the exact pattern that began, that warned them of judgment is now happening in America. Since the book came out, several, as we, I've touched on here, several things have continued. The harbingers have not stopped. They've continued to manifest. I mean, continue, continuously, we are progressing towards it. So this is exact, this is God's warning. That's what the harbinger is. Wow. And it seems like every time you've come, more of the harbinger yeah. has taken place and yeah. taken place. And, yeah. and, and it's like it's alive. Yeah, I'll share. I mean, you know, in some of the programs while we're here, there's more. It, continue, wow. it continues from the president to that tower, which, by the way, everything coming together, that tower has come to its, its conclusion in the year of the Shemitah. Everything is coming together, uh, you know, including the Supreme Court. Every single thing is coming together. So, yeah. Okay, now the mystery of the Shemitah was the next book, and you say this is selling... More it's, it's than even, the other book. It's even going strong. Well, more strongly. Stronger. Yeah, yeah, more strongly. Mystery of the Shemitah is, is a 3,000-year-old mystery. It is linked to the Harbinger, but it is so big that it lies behind virtually everything. It's been affecting our lives from the moment we were born. It, it, it gives the timing of world 
cataclysms, global war, 9-11. Uh, it gives the, the timing of the collapse wow. of Wall Street down to the days, down to the exact days. I mean, it shows God's amazing hand. This is also an end time, end time uh, key because it gives the mystery of the Jubilee, which is, the, which is the, the, the cycle of when Israel was restored, when Jerusalem was restored, and it's coming to a head right now. And all these things are converging also right now. So this was, this just, I didn't even expect to write this, but they asked me to, and then I said, all right, Lord, and then in one month, all these things came, and then it was written in six weeks on the road, because I think the Lord just wanted it out in, before, before this happened. So, so this is, it's very big. This is amazing, and if you don't have the video, if you don't understand the Shemitah, this video, I think, is so good, because all the dates are on the screen, and when you start seeing every seven years, something happened. The stock market people, I hear it all the time. The stock, the people that are not really religious people, they're saying something has happened on these dates. Something happened like every, there's a pattern. Yeah, I was contacted by people from Wall Street when this came out. In fact, all sorts of sites on Wall Street picked this up. You know, so yeah, I've been contacted by, by non-believers who say, yeah, but we didn't know, there was a, we, didn't, we had no idea about the Shemitah. There are charts that do the seven-year charts by non-believers and they have it all converge on the years of the Shemitah. They have no idea what the Shemitah is. <laughs> but it's because God is in charge. Yes, he is. Do you really believe something probably is coming that I, with the Shemitah? I believe well, two things. You know, and you know. Well, you wrote the book. <laughs> yeah, right? I wrote the book, but you know that. <laughs> you know what I say. First of all, uh, number one, I believe a great shaking is coming. Great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. But a change of history. I believe that, that we need to be ready. It doesn't have to happen in the time or dates. God is not in a box. We can't say that. Yes. But it could. You know, if, if, I was, if I was putting it between, you know, could this very well happen as we approach the end of the Shemitah? Very well could. I believe we need to be ready. If it doesn't, that's fine. But then I believe it's coming anyway. It is coming. So I just don't ever want to put God in a box. I don't want people no. so focused on dates. It's, it's about God. It's about repentance. It's about his will. But we need to be aware of the signs of the times. And so, so yes, the, this book has exact dates, and God has done things on the exact dates of the Shemitah. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. Yeah, especially if we go back to even the, the Great Depression. The great, yeah, the Great Depression. Every, the, those dates, you, you talk about this in the book, and, all, and those dates are the same dates, the same time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. An example, 1937, second part of the Great Depression. Shemitah begins, the next day Wall Street collapses. Next day, you know, in the Great Depression, reaches that Elul 29 that ushers in the greatest month collapse in, a, in world history to this day. I mean, there's so much to this. I mean, it, it's so big and it's so exact because it's kind of a sign God is in charge. He's in now, charge. I, I'm going to put you on the spot. And now? The, right now, okay. because I know you, <laughs> I, I, he, he doesn't name, he doesn't date dates because he's very careful because a lot of crazy people have made dates. But all I know is we're in a time where God has warned. I believe the blood moons the, the appearing on holy days, everything converging at yes. the same time. Yeah, everything. I mean, <laughs> America's relationship with God has never been in, in, a, in such a dangerous state. America's relationship with Israel has never been at such a dangerous state. Um, we are progressing like daily away from God. Uh, the harbingers have continued to manifest. The Shemitah is coming to its, its head. It's yeah. also a 50-year cycle or the 49 Jubilee cycle that's also beginning in September as this oh. thing comes to a head. Um, all these things, the, the tower, the last harbinger is just being completed this year. You know, um, all these things are together. Um, so yes, I don't believe you have to be brilliant to see that we are, America is racing towards judgment. I mean, and even some people running for president are alluding to that. You know, so we, we have never been where we are now, ever. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a difficult question. And is it true that you canceled your tour to Israel this year because you felt that it would be wise just to not go at this, this time? What I felt is, one, I can't give a mixed message, and so... If I'm telling people, I'm not saying, again, we can come back here and God could not do something then, but it, it will happen. But whether or not it happens at that time, but I believe we have to be ready for this time. But I'm telling people, be ready. And so I can't tell people, be ready, and then, hey, by the way, get ready, pack up, save your, save your money, and let's go to Israel in the midst of this. You, in other words, you understand? So I can't give a mixed message. 
So, so I've cleared that out, and also I just feel led by the Lord to clear out. I've cleared out my calendar where only in this autumn I'm only doing things that I know for sure strongly are for the Lord. You know, and much I say I just can't. I just feel I, just feel I need to do that in this time period. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. Okay. Well, yeah. So something big is about to happen. We will be right back after this special message. I believe a great shaking is coming, great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. You know, if you're going to drive a car, don't you need fuel? Yes. Well, make believe you're a car. <laughs> what is your fuel? Food. If you don't have food, you die. That's as simple as it is. It's going to be life and death, and that's why bread's going to take a whole day's labor just to get one loaf of bread. That's but right. be ready. My Jewish friends have an expression. They'd rather be a year too soon than 10 minutes too late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you and a year for, for two, two and the time and then, of travel which is seven years and so it's food. all ready to go mm -hmm. now each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry in each of these offers you will receive buttermilk pancakes maple brown sugar oatmeal chocolate pudding morning mousse whey milk creamy chicken and rice hearty vegetable chicken chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, italiano marinara, black bean burger, creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods year for two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer has a retail value of $2,300 and is at a cost of just 50 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods time of trouble offer for a donation of $3,500 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 7,672 servings of food in 28 buckets. This offer has a retail value of $8,055 and is at a cost of just 46 cents per serving. We can only guarantee the prices for a limited amount of time, so get this new food now. Call 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. Do you ever feel like you're in the Bible? That you've been called to do warnings? I mean, you go into the... the if this was Bible, that all the nations would be gathered and you would get to speak to them. And then you're in the capital where you're warning the United States of America. Yeah, I think my, my feeling is, you know, I'm amazed by all this as much as anybody can be amazed. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I don't take this for granted. I'm, but I know it's the Lord. I know I have to, it's like surfing. Yes. I know the wave is there. I have to ride the wave. And I have to just go, the door opens. I have to go through it and trust that he's going to do it. When this was happening, I was, ha last time I was here, you, you said on the ear, you said, well, you, you look better than yesterday or something like you said. Remember, uh, the, because this weird, I had this attack, you know, physically. Yeah. Also, my thyroid went crazy and I barely had breath and my heart was racing. And, and so when at these key moments yeah. when I was preaching, when I was speaking at Capitol Hill to members of Congress and leaders, I, that, I barely had any breath. When I was speaking at the United Nations, I barely had any breath. I mean, thank, but in my weakness, you know, God does it despite us, you know. 
And then I was praying, Lord, please. And then he just completely healed me. But like right after this Thank was over. You, so, so the thing is, I, I feel weakness, my own weakness, you know, like, you know, because it's so big what God, you know, what God's doing. But I believe that the thing is, in the Bible, God always sends prophetic words to thrones, to power. Always, you know, always would go to the kings, always would go to the, the leader, always. And so I believe that's what he's doing. He just keeps opening these doors. I mean, never expected the United Nations. I never expected any of this thing. The meeting on Capitol Hill, the gathering on Capitol Hill, actually was caused by the harbinger, by somebody hearing about the harbinger. And then ah. they tried to do something, and the Lord just opened up Capitol Hill. So every year there's this gathering of prayer in the white, in the Capitol building. It hasn't been for 100 years in this, in this way. It happened through the harbinger. You know, so, so it, it, God just keeps opening it, and I just have to go through it not each time saying, Lord, I have no idea what I'm doing, but you, have, you know what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, it's okay, as long as the Lord knows what he's doing. Right. You know, so, yes. <laughs> so he does it. So, I, so he keeps doing it. So I'm watching leaders, several people who are members, who are, who are running for president, or have either presidents or candidates from before or now. Some of them are handing out the harbinger. Some are lifting it up. Some, you know, some, uh, some are talking to me about it. So you know, there, there's something very prophetic and very big that's happening. So, so the United Nations came out of the blue. I don't even know, how, you know, that I, get a, I get a thing saying, do you want to speak to the United Nations? I said, oh, it sounds good, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and so it, it was, this was over the, you know, we were talking about before about persecution and about Rome and about what's coming. Yes. You know, and people say, well, one of the things about the end times is, you know, there's going to be persecution. Well, there's already more persecution in modern times than in any time in history, including Rome. There's more history, there's more persecution now. In fact, some people say that more than all the rest put together, all the years of human history of the, of the church. So there, there are believers persecuted all over the world right now. You yeah. know, they're not waiting to see about prophecy. They're already in it, you know. Right. So they asked me to speak on that. So that's what I did, you know. Wow. I, I would yeah. love to see that. Can I'm, we show that? Clip, Jim? Yeah, you, is it all right? I believe, yeah, I believe you, yeah, uh, you have Mondo, it. I think, has rolled that piece from the UN. It is <clears throat> April 2015. Seventy years ago, this month, this spring, the concentration camps of the Third Reich were liberated. In their liberation, the Allies forced the nearby townsfolk to walk through the camps to face the depths of the horror that Nazism had led to. But for most of those who lived in those towns by the camps, and for that matter throughout Germany, it wasn't unexpected. It was well known that Jews were being hunted down and taken into cattle cars to concentration camps where horror and likely death awaited them. They knew it, but did nothing to stop it. They themselves weren't in danger. Why should they have risked their comfort, their safety, and their well-being for those who were? But when they walked through those camps in the spring of 1945, they were forced not only to confront the evil of Hitler and the evil of Nazism, but the evil of their own. Because in the end, it was their guilt that was the critical and deciding factor. Without their silent complicity, without the sin of omission and self-interest, the mass murder of six million Jewish men, women, and children could never have taken place. In 1964, in the city in which this gathering has convened, a young woman named Kitty Genovese was approaching her apartment door when she was attacked by a man wielding a knife. The young woman was brutalized over the course of approximately one half hour. At least 12 people heard her screams or saw parts of the attack during those 30 minutes, but the majority did nothing to help her. Some weren't sure what the screams outside their closed windows were, but they never bothered to find out. It was cold outside and they were comfortable in their warmth of the apartment. One neighbor who actually saw the attack pondered whether he should even bother to ask another neighbor to call the police. His explanation was, I didn't want to get involved. As a result of the bystanders of this city, the life of Kitty Genovese was violently snuffed out outside her apartment door. And now as we meet in the city of that crime, another crime is taking place outside our closed windows. Seventy years after the bystanders of Nazi Germany walked through the death camps of the Holocaust, another Holocaust is underway. Again, it involves a satanic hatred, violence, sadistic cruelty. Again, it involves an innocent people marked for destruction, the followers of Jesus, known as Christians throughout the world, who are taught 
when struck to turn the other cheek, when cursed to bless, and when persecuted to forgive those who oppress them. It is these who constitute by far the most persecuted religious group on earth. They are oppressed, they're afflicted, they're hunted down, they're killed, men, women, and children, the sacrificial lambs of the modern world. We meet today in the world's most revered gathering place of nations. And as kings and leaders and ambassadors and delegates convene here to discuss world issues, within the border of over 60 of those nations, Christians are being persecuted by their own governments or by those in whose midst they live, from North Korea to Iran, Afghanistan, Syria, Nigeria, Iraq, Pakistan, Vietnam, Indonesia, and many more. In North Korea, Christians are imprisoned, sent to labor camps, tortured and killed for the crime of owning a Bible. In Nigeria, entire Christian village populations have been massacred. In India, 70,000 Christians have been forced to flee their homes. In Syria, 80,000 Christians have been, quote, cleansed from their homes. In Indonesia, Muslims have put 10,000 Christians to death. And now, after almost 2,000 years, some of the most ancient Christian communities, from the Copts of Egypt to the Nestorians and Assyrian believers in Syria, to the Chaldean and Assyrian believers of Iraq are in danger of extermination. As the evil of ISIS and its allies sweep across the Middle East, an ancient civilization is being annihilated. Its people are perishing, crucified, decapitated, and buried alive in their ancestral soil. Not long ago, the vicar of Baghdad recounted how ISIS ordered four Christian children to renounce Jesus and follow Muhammad. No, they said, we love Yeshua. He has always been with us. Those were the last words the children ever spoke on this earth as ISIS beheaded them. We hear the accounts of the Christians of the first century led into Roman arenas to be torn apart by wild beasts. We ponder how savage and barbaric those days were. We wonder what would we have done had we been there. If we had lived in those days and could have saved the lives of the innocent, would we have saved them? The truth is we do live in those days. Those days are now. More Christians have been persecuted, brutalized, and killed in the modern age than any other. Every year, tens of thousands of Christians are dehumanized, tortured, killed. Over 100 million Christians live under the darkness of persecution. It is the modern age which holds the most savage and barbaric of days. And what are we doing as the Christians are being led away to be devoured? This very body, the United Nations, adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which declares that everyone has the right to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. In the World Summit Outcome, document of September 2005, paragraph 139, the United Nations declared that the international community has the responsibility to protect populations from genocide, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanity. So where are all the resolutions? Where are all the troops? Where are all the actions taken to protect the most persecuted people on earth? And where is the universal outcry? It is a strange and immoral silence, the same strange and immoral silence that allowed six million Jews to be delivered to their deaths. We must not repeat the mistake of the last century. Evil never stays put. The same darkness that destroyed 6 million Jewish lives would end up destroying over 60 million lives throughout the world. The evil that first warred against the Jewish people was a harbinger of what would overcome the earth. In the days when coal miners died of black lung disease, an answer was found in the caged canary. The canary was brought deep into the mines. If it grew sick and died, it would be the sign and the alarm that the air inside the mine was toxic. What happened to the caged canary was a harbinger of danger. The persecuted Christian is the caged canary of the modern world. The first target of evil, the sign and the alarm of a toxic evil in the world and a growing danger. If we don't deal with that evil when it targets others on distant shores, we'll surely deal with it when it targets us on our own shore. No civilization can call itself moral if it fails to defend its most defenseless against that which seeks to devour them. No nation can call itself good if it sits back and does nothing when the effects of evil murders the innocent. And no people can call themselves Christian if they watch passively on the sidelines as those who share the name of Messiah are oppressed and killed for their faith. 
If our faith consists of how comfortable and prosperous God can make us as we deafen our ears to the cries of those who are neither comfortable or prosperous, our brothers and sisters imprisoned and tortured for their faith, how can we bear the name Christian? On the day of judgment, we'll be asked, why did you do nothing to save them? And what will the answer be? It's written in the book of Hebrews, remember those who are in chains as in chains with them. So as we sit on our couches in front of our television sets, in our air-conditioned homes, as we, are we remembering our brothers and sisters who sit on stone floors of prison camps as they suffer for their faith? They would say to us now, do not forget us. Do not forget our suffering. Remember us. Remember us as our enemies come to take our lives. Remember us. Remember us. Do not forget that we once lived and we gave our lives for our faith and for Messiah. We cannot forget them. We must remember them and we must help them. What would you do if in your neighborhood a band of criminals take over a house next door to you and they're holding your neighbors hostage? What if every day they oppressed them, humiliated them, tortured them? What if every night you could hear through your windows their cries, their screams, and you did nothing? You didn't try to save them. You didn't tell your other neighbors and gather them to help. You didn't even bother to call the police. In the end, how would you be judged? There's only one answer. You would be judged as guilty and evil. And what if they didn't live next door but down the block? Or what if they lived a town away or a nation away or oceans away? Would it make any difference? Does geography in any way alter the charge of morality? It does not. So if men and women and children across the world are being held captive, beaten, tortured, and put in danger of death, and we know about it, and we hear their distant screams but choose to do nothing, then how will we in the end be judged? We will be judged like, likewise guilty. It's written on the day of judgment will either be upheld or condemned by the good or bad we did to God, to the Messiah. And when we ask him, when was it that we did good to you? Or when was it that we sinned against you? He will answer when you did it to the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So if we refuse to get involved and help those who are the least of his brothers, what are we doing? We are refusing to help the Messiah. If we turn a deaf ear to their cries, we are turning a deaf ear to the cries of Messiah. And on that day, he will say to us, when my village burned down in Nigeria, why did you do nothing to help me? When I was in prison inside a labor camp in North Korea, why did you forget me? When ISIS came to kill my family, why did you not help us? And when I was tortured, when I was beheaded, when I was buried alive, when I was crucified, why did you ignore my cries for your help? Why did you let me perish? He will say, now depart from me, I never knew you. When that day comes, let it not be said of us that we heard the cries of God and did nothing to help him. In the time it takes us to hold this session, more people will be brutalized and killed. If it was your family about to be destroyed, if it was your life about to be taken, if it was your little child about to be beheaded, and others could help but chose not to, what would you think? Then let us do the only right and moral thing, as is written in the scriptures, deliver those who are being delivered to death. Let us not go down in the annals of history and in the judgment of God as the bystanders who saw the evil but did nothing to stop it, who heard the screams of the kitty genovesis of this world but chose to let them die outside our doors, who watched the cattle cars deliver the innocent to their deaths, but chose to stay silent. Let us not be guilty of another Holocaust. Open up your windows, hear the cries, open up your doors, open up your heart, your life, and whatever you have to do to save them, save them. Messiah is screaming. Messiah is being buried alive. Messiah is being beheaded. Messiah is being crucified again. Save him. Save the Messiah. For God's sake, do the right thing. Deliver those who are being delivered to death. Amen. God bless you. Rabbi, I have a few words that came to me right there. You just spoke bold, powerful truth to the United Nations, but yet to me, and it should be to you as well, a challenge to us as Christians who call ourselves Christians. Rabbi, the, the people applauded there. You were speaking in the United Nations building in a way to the world, the meeting place of the world. And so God counts that as a warning because it was really symbolic, but it was to the leaders of the world 
there, I was surprised how many were actually applauding yeah. you. Yes. And, and interrupting your speech uh, with well, applause. <coughs> well, there are. Well, let me tell you what happened, something that happened after. Okay. A few days later, I got an email that was from the office of the Secretary General of the United Nations. It wasn't from him, but it was from somebody in his office. And he said, come down, we want to speak to you. So I came down to the United Nations a few days later. And it turns out there are, in the United Nations, you wouldn't think, there are in some high up positions, there are believers there. And they wanted to meet with me to pray in the United Nations, oh, to wow. pray, to pray and pray for revival in the United Nations. And they prayed for Israel. We were right, be right behind where you see that where the great secretary, the secretary general speaks. We're right behind that praying while they're in session. We're praying, worshiping God, worshiping <laughs> God, praying about how there can be revival and God can use the United Nations. So you never know. Amazing. You never know. You never know. I love, yeah. don't you it's love like that? It's like Caesar's household, that? you know. That's yeah. called the favor of God yeah. upon your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, when you kneel, <coughs> kneel down up in the mountain there to give your life to Jesus, you could have never known the road you would travel. No, 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 except that, except that it turned out <laughs> that mountain was, had been dedicated to Satan, and I was kneeling down on, I was getting saved on that altar, and so it was going to be dramatic from the beginning. You know, I, 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 I had no idea. I had no idea, but I think that was, it was going to be dramatic from the beginning, but I, I could not have known, of course no, not. No. And that God can use any of us. I mean, when none of us are worthy of being used except God chooses. Yes. And we just have to, we just have to go and yes. just, Lord, Lord, do it, yes. you know, in Lord, my weakness. Yes. Is this a test for the church as well as the world? I believe so. If we don't help those, we don't speak up for those who are being persecuted now, yeah. who's going to speak up for us when we're persecuted? That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. as you have done it to me, you know, it'll be done. You know, so yes. I, you know, the Bible, we, we talk about in the Revelation where beheadings take place and there's, I guess, millions are seen at the throne in, in, in the Bible that literally says these are those who were beheaded. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And so... And, and is it strange that ISIS, their favorite means of killing is beheading? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. These are the days. I these mean, are the, the other, days. These are the days. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to wait for biblical times. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? What are, I mean, what, do we stand up? And if we're not bold, for the, you know, we have to be bold in America. We have to be bold for them and we have to be bold here, you know. But if we're not, if everybody's silent, then the enemy just does his thing. We have to stand as they stood in the first century. You know, I believe people don't know. I think we, we have happy church. God bless you and your happy churches. But you need more than happiness. You need more than to know how good you are because we not, aren't really that good. It's time the preachers start letting us know maybe we are sinners that need to get at the foot of the cross again. Forgive me, but... Yeah. 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 He didn't call us to be comfortable. That's not what it's about. Right. And that's one of the sins. That's one of the, the, the sins of the church right now. The idea, it's inward turning instead of being the light to the world we were supposed to be. I love that, Rabbi, that, that we are not called to be comfort. And sit. when you said sit in our living rooms with our, our you know, air-conditioned room, and, you know, it's, yeah, that really resonated with me because there are times I do that. I don't know about you, but I have to have my air conditioning on and, and have that big screen TV and watch something mindless. And, but we're not called yeah, to be yeah, comfortable. Yeah, it's not, it's not wrong to have blessings, but it's wrong to hoard your blessings when others have nothing and not, re not bless them. I agree. You know, when, ri when Richard Wormbrand was in jail in the pr communist prisons, they, they, you know, he, when he, he came to America and, and they said, well, how can you, isn't it hard for you to see the American Christians? This is back then, you know, yeah. American Christians and like that, you know, you know and he said, he said, no, here, here's the thing. He says, you know, when we were in prison and we had nothing, we, we would have a crust of bread and we would eat the bread and say, let, it says rejoice with those who rejoice. So our brothers and sisters in the West are having steak tonight. So let's eat it uh. as if it were steak and let's rejoice with them. Uh. So we rejoice with you, he said, but we just ask that you would, you would also share with us in our sufferings. The Bible says, remember those who are in chains as if in chains with them. Now you're calling for people to be light today, that the church must be light. The church 
It's like the church is inside the church. We're right. not affecting United Nations. God called you to get out of your church. You have a church yeah. or a synagogue. But you have to get out and, and, have to. and let your light shine. Yeah. And you're telling us we've got to be strong. Because you don't really like telling people that trouble's coming. But trouble is coming if you believe the Bible. Read Matthew and so 24. We, the, <laughs> it's time for the church to be strong. How do how are we get? We need the word of God. Yes. The word of God makes us strong. Yes. Yes. Not milk. Yes. But meat of the word. Yes. The yes. strength. Yes. They overcame by the word of their testimony. By the word of God, by the blood of Messiah, and the spirit of God, we overcome. But we have to, we can't stay in the salt shaker. We have to be lights. What's the point? We have to be salt of the world. And there, ha there comes a point, I think God wants to take it, again, where he's removing the graves, where we come to a point where we say, okay, forget the compromise. It's too much. I'm here. I'm finally going to draw my line in the sand. That's it. Come what may. It's like when Paul, when, when, when actually Esther said, if I perish, I perish. We have to get to that point yes. if we're going to be any good. Yes. Say, all right, it's enough. Yes. Whatever happens, let them Fair. do what they want. I'm standing for God. Yes. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You know, that is it. We have to get to that point. Absolutely. You know, I, I felt, I, as you were talking and as you go into these places, I, I felt I, that scripture came to me. If I perish, I perish. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Yeah. We have to be bold. Oh, yeah. Only if you're willing to die can you live. Exactly. You know, only if you can say oh. that can you live for God. And our oh, security say it again. Wait, wait, say him. that again. Please, Rabbi. Only if you're willing to die, you can live. Oh. He who will lose his life will save it. That's when you're free. Hey, I don't care. I'm living for Jesus. Let them do it. I'm, I'm going to live for him. Yeah. Amen. Um, how many, how many, ha how many go to a church that does tell you that we're in the last days? Raise your hand. Oh, my God. Only a few. Five people in this room go to a church that tells them about the last mm. days. But that's sad. That's shocking. See, the churches are not, are not teaching. That's why our, our audience is growing like crazy. You have no idea what's going on with our network. That's and right. then we added a s short wave. We're on three. That's right. Worldwide networks. Where's my radio? These will be gone again. We, we buy every radio like this. I went to the biggest re uh, retailer of electronics. They don't carry a shortwave anymore. Used to be you could buy them. You know, you could have it on a band on it. This radio, you can pick up England. You can pick up Canada. You can pick up Mexico. You can pick up shortwave. And there's antennas on it. Here's one right here. But you can put a, uh, an antenna and hook it on there and run it up high in the tree, get one of your grandchildren or something, <laughs> climb a tree and put your antenna. But do you not want to hear if the grid's gone, if there's no power, no television, no electricity, if you have a radio with short wave, you can at least tune in and find out are the Marines coming for us? Or have they all left? Is Washington still there? Would you like to know that? You ought to read the book of Revelation. That's all I'm asking. Read the book of Revelation. Read Matthew 24. Jesus gives you a whole laundry list of what's going to happen before he comes back. That's right. That the thing with this radio is it's solar. So it charges with sun. So you don't have to have batteries. You can have batteries. You can put batteries in it. You can do anything with this thing. And if there's then no it, sun, you, 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 can you just crank, crank it. it up. Mm -hmm. It'll crank up. And then you can charge your cell phones yes. with this radio. There's a USB port it's right a, in the back. It's, it's right. just a little simple thing. But it has lights. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I'm the lighting on it has the, a, a, a flashlight up here. That's right. And I mean, I just wish I could, I could demonstrate all of it. Because it is, it is so filled with stuff. And then back yes, here, it has the, the light panel. to read by or to light up your room with. Mm -hmm. This light here. And it all charges up with solar, sun power. Or it charges up with cranking power. Crank. Or you can have batteries in it. And you can charge it up. You can, if we, have, we even bought extra mm -hmm. and, and put the electrical chargers. That's so you can, right. you can charge port. it for the walls mm -hmm. if you want. 
And uh, we always try to go the second mile with everything we do, and that was extra. And But we bought those and put those in. There's just so many things on this, all these radio bands. But the short wave is there that uh, you can get radio when the grid is down. You'll get it from other countries. So we're offering these for the ship as it has come in they'll be gone again we've ordered another ship in fact the company that makes this is one of the big big radio companies and we've already sold their ship and we're basically going to be selling into the ship they ordered for themselves but jerry jones bought it all we, so we ordered Yay. that next ship and we're we're going to buy another ship load and there will be a day when the ships won't even be coming anymore. But, so if you want one of those, at least get the order in, even if, if they tell you it's out. But they, they're in right now. The ship is, uh, another ship has just come in. So, so you need to call 1-888-988-1588 or write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or go to our website, jimbakershow.com. Yes. Go to the web store, and that tells you everything about all of the products, and it's so easy to do. Just do it now. Do something. Do something to help prepare yourself and your loved ones. All I'm doing is saying, I believe the king is coming. I believe we're in the last days. I believe that we have, he said, it's going to be the harvest time. What is the end of the age? The harvest time. Did you read that in the Bible ever? Yes. It's the harvest time. So it's our time to win souls. Yes, so God's is. not through with us yet. The trouble is most churches have been teaching you you're going out before anything bad happens. Well, we missed an opportunity because 9-11 wasn't exactly cool. What about the people in other countries right mm -hmm. now that are dying by the thousands? Mm. Oh, well, we're the chosen ones, right? We're, we're the good guys in America. So God's not going to let the good guys in America go through anything. But he's letting the people in the Mideast go through it. He's letting Israel go through hell. What, how, many are, how many are dying, Rabbi? <clears throat> There's different estimates, um, but thousands. Thousands are being continuously. Having their yeah. heads cut off? Yeah, yeah, being and persecuted and Killed in all different ways. On yes. crosses? Yes, yes. Buried alive, you know. I, uh, I mean, what this, I'm what telling you, you the, the tribulation so period, figures. If, mm. if you want to get honest, is already begun. Do you know what tribulation means? Pressure. Look it up. It means pressure. My God, if we're not under pressure, oh boy, we've crazy. missed a good chance to be under pressure. America's under pressure. The world's under pressure. They're dying all over the world. Thousands are leaving their homes, being kicked out of their homes. Why, we've been sitting around teaching prosperity. The Arab world's been out recruiting and has become the number one missionaries in the world. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, the Lord's been speaking to me recently that to absolutely wean myself, that is the word. I didn't know wow. that was the word, yeah. but I kept hearing your voice in wow. my heart it's saying whatever it is in your life, it, in your heart, just, you know, get rid of it. You know, how do you say it? You say it so, per you've said it so many times I should memorize it by now, but just just yeah. get rid of those Unplugged. things that yeah. aren't, you know, that aren't of God. And, and the thing is, is the culture is so corrupt. It is yeah. so wicked. Our culture, and you know, us Christians just buy into it. I believe we are to wean ourselves spiritually, culturally, emotionally from the yeah. things we are attached that we are not to because there's, there, the more that the culture becomes corrupt, the more that corruption comes in unless you cut it off. Exactly. And then, but also wean yourself. This is all goes with preparation too. You know, wean from dependency on things you shouldn't be dependent on. Right. Where, and, and the answer, how do you do that? Well, Elijah was weaned from the world because he was plugged into God. Because he was so dependent on God and receiving from God and fed by God, and he could be independent of the world. And it's crucial that we, as the Elijahs, have to be weaned. 
that we get all the more plugged into. We need the spirit. We need to get back into the joy of the Lord. We need to get, to get yeah. totally into the spirit. It's yeah. wonderful. We need, that we need to do that to be the strong, to be the pillars and the lights for the hour that is awaiting us. So yeah. God is saying, become weaned. And so I did it. So and for that reason, good. I can't go into the whole thing, but I did a teaching called The Secret of Weaning because it's, it's right very here, important. It's yeah. how to become weaned. I, I mean, every, I cannot wait to watch these. I have not watched them yet. And I don't know, Zachary, have you... You watched them all. I'm sure Sasha, they're the researchers and do all of this. This, I am so excited. To and, there, learn and there's two that are so new, they're not there. I have to do them when I get home, <laughs> which, is, which is the word for the hour. Yes. I just want to get this right. And yes. the Isaiah 910 metamorphosis. You there know, it is. We, I, I am going to, in the di in the time we have, you know, tomorrow, next day, we're yes. going to. We are going to get into the ghost kingdom, which is totally, I believe, revolutionary about the end times. Also, the twilight of the gods. I was encouraging the the Craspedon mystery, which is the garment of Messiah and being under that covering. Also, things from David Wilkerson. I know oh. we told you, you know, there are yeah. things that we, you know, that are coming true now, and there are yeah. things that are converging with that too. But much, and then about getting ready for what's ahead. So yeah. we're going wow. to all that. So Everybody this weaning, you saying. The key is it's important to do it before yes. the calamity. Yes, or you're caught unaware. Yeah, if you're dependent, if you're dependent, when, if you're addicted, when that thing gets taken away, you're in no position. The key is now, you know, now. I've quieted my soul like a weaned child. I am still with God. You know, that, that psalm, I'm oh. before God's presence. Wean yourself, and you have to get into the presence of God. You have to. Can you imagine in the major cities oh. when a calamity comes? The last day calamities come. Millions of people, spoiled people that are used to having what they want when they want it, used to having bread that you could just go and buy. That's right. No bathrooms, no toilets flushing. What are they going to do? No one has prepared people for the last day. You're seeking, for what's coming. You're seeking to. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're seeking to. The Don't you believe David, God showed David 9-11 in some ways? Because you, you, his church was, was fasting and praying. Yeah, well, they, they didn't know what was coming, but they knew something was, something coming, was coming. And they stopped all their, all their programming. We're going to talk about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, oh, yeah. Don't miss yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Don't okay. miss yeah. Every day. Our Every time day. is Every gone day. again. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. And uh, don't forget, order your food. It's, it's shipping right now. We're shipping fast. You just order it and get it shipped out. Yeah. You want to get a, you know, a order of pizza. Yes. Twenty year pizza. You oh. can do that now. That's There's our so first many, brand new product. So many different the items eggs, you can the, order. The honey is still available yes. for a few more days. The forty days and forty nights offer. I mean, you can go on and on. Go to jimbakershow.com yeah. and go to the web and store, the, the, and it'll tell you. The everything. generator is still available at because another ship is right in behind. And so we're going to let that one go for the same we've been talking about. Yeah. So just do it quickly. Let's be ready. Let's be prepared. Let's be prepared and then learn also. Let's have some classes on how to win souls. Wouldn't that be good? So we can be ready for the end of the age according to the Bible. And it's the harvest time. Because Proverbs says, those who win souls are wise. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Rabbi. Oh, my blessing. Appreciate you being here. We love my you, blessing. Rabbi. We appreciate our you. Our website is wide open. All you've got to do is go to our website, and uh, you can shop right there and look there at all is. the stuff and just click and push and, and order there. Uh, and it'll be shipped right out as fast as we can possibly get it to you. Or you can just call 1-888-988-1588 or write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. I feel led to say, get something. the radio, get that radio, because yes. the next ship is coming in. Let's just let's just get them now while we can. It's 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 just difficult to keep.